everybody. Welcome back to today's Bible study. I'm your speaker, JTML 9681. This one only has a very short scripture, but a lot of meaning behind it. So go ahead and pause this video at your leisure and give yourselves a word of prayer before we get started. Alright. The title is Yahshua, Our High Priest. And as I said before, we only got short scriptures, but we do have a bit of explanation. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, the letter to the Hebrews that the Apostle Paul wrote in chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the Shalmayim, that's plural for heavens, it's always been plural, I don't know why in the English translations it's, it's singular. That may have came from Greek, I don't know. Yahshua, the son of Elohim, also known as the rightful heir of Elohim, the rightful heir to the throne. Let us hold fast our profession. Now, about the great high priest that is passed into the Shamayim. Now, the name great high priest would appoint who actually held the office and was at the head of all other priests. The idea here is not merely that Yahshua, which is Jesus, was a priest, but that he was at the head of all. And now passed it to the Shamayim. The Jewish high priest went once a year into the most holy place in the temple, the Holy of Holies, is, in English terms is what, it, is what they called it, and to offer the blood of atonement. And what that was, was making an amends for the people to be forgiven. Now that was only a temporal thing, because this was before Yahshua even came to the earth. And now the son of Elohim, Yahshua is not a descendant of Aaron, but one much greater, the rightful heir to the throne of the kingdom of Elohim, God. And see, that's the thing. It's just like in uh, the book of Genesis with Abraham about the son that he loved so much, which is talking about where it's in Genesis chapter 22, where it says, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, that's not saying that Isaac was the only son that Abraham had, not including Ishmael. Remember, Ishmael was his very first son, but Ishmael was not the rightful heir. Isaac was. That's what it means. And so that makes Yahshua the rightful heir to the kingdom of Elohim. And then to hold fast our profession. The object of this is to show that we have such a high priest. And which is the reason why we should make sure that our professed attachment to Yahshua is secured. That why we live for Yahshua that makes us so attached to him and his father that we are so secured in being yoked with Yahshua of having our tents pitched with the Father, Abba Yahweh, with Yahshua, Jesus, and with the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Now, how do we hold fast? Well, two very specific ways. One, you look to Yahshua for help. It can't get any simpler than that. You cry out to him when you need help. And the the other one is there is only one high priest in whom the sacrifice will never be repeated if any of us fall away from him. Now this is not saying that if you if any of us fall away we're done for. No. It's saying that we if any of us were to fall away if we w are to come back then the sacrifice does not have to be done again. Yahshua does not have to be hung again for us. We simply call, cry out to him and come back to him. That's what that means. All right, now verse 15 of Hebrews chapter 4. 
For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So, our high priest, Yahshua, is not cold and unfeeling. He is abundantly qualified to sympathize with us in our sufferings, and to whom therefore we may look for aid and support in trials. If we had a high priest who was cold and heartless, who simply performed the external duties of his office without entering into the sympathies of those who came to seek for pardon, who had never experienced any trials and who felt himself above those who sought his aid, we should necessarily feel disheartened in attempting to overcome our sins and to live with Elohim, God. His coldness would repel us, his stateliness would awe us, his distance and reserve would keep us away and discourage us to have any desire to be saved. But tenderness and sympathy attract those who are feeble, and kindness does more than anything else to encourage those who encounter difficulties and dangers. Such tenderness and sympathy are the traits of our great high priest. And now, at all points, was tempted just like us. Yahshua was subject to all kinds of trials to which we can be. And we do get tempted in the same ways every day. Therefore, he is able to sympathize with us and aid us. He was tempted in the literal sense. He was persecuted. He was poor. He was despised. He suffered physical pain. He endured the sorrows of a lingering and most cruel death. But yet, he had no sin. Yahshua had done no violence, neither did any lies come out of his mouth. Yahshua never did anything that was wrong or incorrect. Yahshua would not do so. That's as simple as it can ever be put. Now, verse 16. This is the final stretch. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, a throne is the seat of a person of power or authority. That's typically what a throne is. The throne of grace is designed to represent Elohim seated to give mercy and forgiveness. Elohim is represented as seated in the most sacred place on the mercy seat. The high priest approaches that seat or throne of the divine majesty with the blood of the atonement to make intercession for the people and to plead for forgiveness. Elohim is seated on a throne of mercy. The great high priest of the called out ones, those are those of us who believe who are not Jewish or even those who are Jewish but believe in Yahshua and live for Yahshua. We, you can also call us the church or the bride of Christ, the bride of Mashiach. We are the called out ones. Having shed his own blood, talk about Yahshua, to make amends for the world is represented as approaching his father and pleading for forgiveness of the people who believe in Yahshua and to receive eternal life. We should come not depending on our own merits, which means our own works do not get us into heaven and do not give us eternal life. That's a false doctrine. But we come where a sufficient sacrifice has been offered for human guilt and where we are assured that Abba Yahuwah, the Father, is merciful. We should come without doubting or trembling and ask for all the mercy that we need. Now, obtaining mercy. We need mercy as the first thing when we come to Elohim. We are guilty and self-condemned, which means we know we, were, we are wrong. We know we've done wrong. It's also consider being humbled. And our first cry should be for mercy. A man who comes to Elohim not feeling his need of mercy must fail of obtaining the divine favor and will be best prepared to obtain that favor who has the deepest sense of his need of forgiveness. And now, grace in time of need. The favor of grace 
which is strength, help, counsel, direction, and support for the various duties and trials in life. This is what we always need. Even when forgiven, we need grace to keep us from wanting sin in our lives and aid us when temptation comes upon us. That's what being, keeping your, your tents pitched with Elohim is about. Keeping your wicks trimmed and your lamps burning bright. Feeling our need of this, we may come and ask Abba Yahweh all that we want for this purpose. The purpose of, keep, of, of aiding us away from temptation and keeping sin away from us. Even though we will still sin, it's going to happen. But we don't want it to. That's the difference. This bold approach to the throne of grace is given to us and we are freely invited. See, we are always invited. Even for those who don't believe, you are invited freely. But you cannot receive it if you don't truly want it. That's going to be it for this one, folks. Anyone have any questions or prayer requests? If you are using a computer, go to the link in the video description. I'll take you to my discussions page. You can leave them there. If you're using a phone or any other type of device, just leave it in the comments section. Abba willing. There will be another Bible study coming soon. Probably, you know, after the 1st of February, most likely. Until our next Bible study, or any other videos for that matter. Until then, stay safe. Shalom, my friends. And the Baptist Bible study in the name of the Son, Yahshua HaMashiach. Jesus Christ.